Hey, we're London Grammar, and we are editor in chief of Click for today. I click on sci-fi films. My all-time favourite is Alien. <laughs> Yeah, my mum let me watch that film. She denies this, but she let me watch that film when I was about seven or something. I'm still so scared. Like, I love that film so much. When I was at university, there was a fancy dress shop that had a life-size huge alien in the front window, and I walked past it, and I saw it out of the corner of my eye, and I absolutely just freaked out completely. It was terrifying. <laughs> I love Stanley Kubrick's films. I think I wouldn't know what my favourite was. I mean, I do love The Shining. It was amazing that Kubrick made a horror film in The Shining because sometimes the films is kind of... There are a lot of like more trashy horror films made. It's not even... It's not that scary. I click on Lawrence of Arabia. Come on! For over a quarter of a century, controversy has raged around the name of T.E. Lawrence. No man of our time has drawn upon himself so much praise and so much criticism. I watched it when I was younger, actually, and I think um, I loved it then. But I think I, I watched it again recently, and I think I just sort of developed a new appreciation for it. Visually, it's just so beautiful. Lawrence of Arabia filmed against a canvas of awesome magnificence. In some ways, that probably is the best film of all time. Like, the all-time epic is the, my favourite epic film, yeah. I would click on Breakfast at Tiffany's. I would recommend reading the book first and then watching the film. You have a special invitation to attend Audrey Hepburn's open house on the wildest night New York ever knew. Timber! So, Audrey Hepburn is in it. It's one of her probably her most famous film and she's just wonderful in it she's so beautiful won't you join me she still manages to hold true i think to holly's kind of darkness from the book there's such a lot of world to see i would click on joni mitchell both sides now I will click on sixth. They're an English, um, like, prog metal band. Pretty heavy. Uh, they're kind of crazy. I used to listen to quite a lot of metal as well growing up, because, I mean, just more because of the drum. They're so good. And we recorded. We were recording in the studio. We were doing some demos, like, and they were recording next door, and they're, like, one of my favourite bands. So I was like, fuck off, sixth, they're in there. I would click on a song called Real Love Baby by Father John Misty. I want real love, baby. Ooh, don't leave me waiting. I want real love, baby. I click uh, Chopin's Nocturne, Nocturnes. Sometimes I couldn't sleep and I'd always listen to Chopin's Nocturne to, pour, to sleep. I know them all so well that it feels like um, familiarity, but I love them. You know, they're my favourite. Um, Nights in White Satin by the Moody Blues. Nights in White Satin Never reaching the end I click on that a lot. This is an incredible, incredible song. I would click on Talk Talk. I just can't They're the kind of band that kind of influenced a lot of modern day sort of sad, depressing music like ours, like Radiohead in particular. I'm a 
I like sad music. I, I don't know why I connect with sad music more. That kind of music probably lends itself to like thinking about your emotions and your relationships and your feelings and, and also just like life and all of the... A happy song, oh yeah. I'd click on Beyonce all night. Red Hot Chili Peppers. I've mentioned him earlier, Truman Capote's short stories. Um, I think they're the most amazing literature I've ever read. Um, so he, he writes in this really magical, kind of dark way. One short story is just called A Christmas Memory. And it's just really well written, it's really powerful. I mean, I couldn't even really tell you exactly what happened in it, because it is exactly that, it's a Christmas memory. But it's just so beautifully written that it's really quite astonishing how he uses words and language. I just recently got down to read American Psycho by Bret Easton Ellis. I've seen the film, but the book is a lot more like sadistic, I guess, because um, he does things in the book that you couldn't really portray in a film and still, and still like the protagonist. You'd think he was just a bit of an asshole. I click on a author called Tony Parsons, and he is a very weird and interesting character. And he writes um, one of them very famously called The Open Secret, which is a strange book. I can't really explain it. You have to read it. It's a philosophy book, but it's very odd. And it's but it's very brilliant. And I think it's um, it's just yeah, it's just an interesting and. If you want to be introspective and insightful about your life, it's a good one. Gone with the Wind. I love Gone with the Wind. I actually read that quite recently, like in the last couple of years. I was obsessed with, um, at university, obsessed with the Gothic literature, like Frankenstein and um, Dracula, Bram Stoker, and a picture of Dorian Gray, Oscar Wilde. Thanks. It's Gothic. But yeah, I love, I mean, the Gothic literature is, like, was, is my favourite. But, but that's where horror sort of began.